Hello everyone, hope all of you are fine. We are here to present our lecture through the platform of Pharmacology Notes and it is delivered by registered pharmacist Humaira Shaheen. Let's start the today's topic that is cholinergic agonist. Yes, cholinergic agonist, what are these drugs? Cholinergic agonists. Cholinergic agonists are all those agonists for which stimulates cholinergic receptors, as we have discussed about sympathetic nervous system. Yes, the periphery nervous system has the two divisions, sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous system. So this parasympathetic nervous system has acetylcholine. Acetylcholine is released by all the Pre-ganglionic neurons in sympathetic and parasympathetic neurons, and it is also released in postganglionic divisions uh, in the case of post, uh, parasympathetic nervous system. Pre-ganglionic fibers dominating in adrenal medulla, autonomic ganglia, and then postganglionic fibers of parasympathetic division use acetylcholine as a neuron. Transmitter. This is a neurotransmitter. Neurotransmitter. Yes. So, uh, the, uh, also the uh, postgranglionic sympathetic divisions of sweat glands versus cytokine. In addition, cholinergic neurons innervate the muscles of somatic system and also play more. In the central nervous system by this neurotransmitter acetylcholine. We will study in this lecture about the synthesis, storage, release, action, degradation, and reuptake. Yes, we will study about the things here that include synthesis of this important neurotransmitter, it's a storage. It's release, it's action, it's release, it's action, and degradation, degradation, and then free cycle. This is an important neurotransmitter. It will simulate the postganglionic neurons and preganglionic neurons. The responsible for multiple actions, this is the of letter, and how this is produced in our body, the neurotransmitter, and how it acts. As we have discussed uh, for others, that norepinephrine, which is a which is a naturally occurring neurotransmitter in our body, is the same as acetylcholine, which is naturally occurring neurotransmitter, but this one is cholinergic. So let's have a look at how it is produced. Again, we have to move towards a neuron. It is a cell body of a neuron. And this is a nerve ending and the next rate is synaptic cleft. Yes, the next rate is synaptic cleft. And here are the effectors present which are having receptors for this acetylcholine. Getting it? Yes. Now, from where it gets started. There is something, yes, there is something called choline. There is choline and this choline is required to synthesize acetylcholine and this needs to be moved from extra cellular fluid into cytosol. We need this choline to move from extracellular to cytosol, but this cannot move by its own. Yes, choline is transported from extracellular fluid into cytoplasm of cholinergic neuron by an energy dependent carrier that co transports sodium. Yes, why this happened? Because this choline has quaternary nitrogen, it needs an other charge with it to be transported, and that is sodium. 
Yes, this sodium will be transported to a special transporter. So, co-transporter. Co-transporter means a type of a transporter which will transport both of these things. Bulim will be transported from extracellular fluid into cytosol and sodium will move from the extracellular fluid into cytosol. And when this choline has moved here, now this choline is already happening. Because we you know that, that uh, the use beneficially, so this choline in the cytosol, you can remember that this is a cytosol, this choline will bind with something which is called acetate group. And that acetate group is present in, yes, it is present in acetyl CoA. It is with the acetyl CoA. This acetyl CoA, it is coming from mitochondria after fatty acids oxidation, or the, it is coming from yes, pyruvate oxidation after the oxidation of fatty acids and pyruvate in the mitochondria, it would like acetyl CoA. And from this acetyl CoA, we just need acetyl group to be attached to this colon again. When this will bind together, this will form acetyl. And this choline. If we write a blink, then it's acetyl choline. So we can write it as is. It is a choline part and it's the acetyl part. Now, this acetyl choline, which has been formed, we need this acetyl choline to be stored because we don't want it to be destroyed by acetyl choline as trace, which is present in the cytosol, which can digest it and separate acetyl and acetate and choline group. So there is a vesicle which has an energy dependent transporter which will transport this acetyl choline into vesicle and make this vesicle contain other neurotransmitters. So there is acetyl choline we can find it. This it has been synthesized and it has been stored. Now it will remain stored unless and until there is action potential propagating. When action potential propagates, it will open, yes, it will open voltage gated sodium channels, sodium channel which will lead inward sodium, which will movement of, which will cause movement of sodium inside. And when sodium will be inside, it will cause depolarization, and this depolarization will lead to opening of voltage gated calcium channels. When these calcium channels are activated, there is much calcium in the vesicle, and this calcium will cause the release of this acetyl protein. It will cause is this acetyl choline vesicle to fuse and release this acetylcholine in post synaptic membrane or synaptic cleft. So as calcium comes here, then calcium cause by have its binding sites here, cause a bonding of this vesicle and leads to the release of acetylcholine. Now, this acetylcholine, which has been synthesized from choline by combining with acetyl-CoA and gets stored into the storage vesicle released in the synaptic cleft. Now, it's ready to bind to the receptors and it will bind to the two type of receptor that is muscarinic. These receptors could be muscarinic receptors or Nicotinic receptors, both type of receptors could be there for the action of acetyl choline. Now there is something which is waiting for this acetylene to come in the synaptic lift. There is one thing we have take mechanism for this, which will take this acetyl choline back as this one is a precious neurotransmitter and stored back. And the second one is that is called acetyl acetyl choline. As terase means an enzyme which is ready to digest this. 
which is ready to break this acetylcholine and it will cause the breakage of this acetylcholine into the two subcutane into choline and yes it will lead to the formation of and choline and acetate this acetylcholine by acetylcholine esterase get converted back into choline and acetate and this choline is very really much important for the formation of acetylcholine so it will be reuptaken so is it clear yes this acetylcholine is a neurotransmitter which act on cholinergic receptors it is synthesized when choline with the sodium co-transporter transported and combined with acetyl CoA from acetyl CoA takes acetate group and acetate and choline combines to make acetyl choline an important neurotransmitter. Then the acetyl choline by energy trans uh, dependent transporter get transported into storage recycle which upon action potentials propagation and opening calcium channels get fused with a neuronal membrane and then release acetylcholine in the synaptic cleft. This acetylcholine is ready to act on the receptors. So hopefully it's clear till here. Thank you for watching the video and keep watching for the next.